Lashi Yarag have gathered here today to remember Joe McKelvey, Liam Mellows, Richard Barrett and Rory O'Connor on the 100th anniversary of their execution by Free State Forces. The four Republicans we remember today were picked for execution because they had all been officers in the four courts or members of the IRA and each one represented a different province of Ireland. They were then buried in four different counties of Ireland. Rory O'Connor in the Republican plot in Glasnevin Cemetery, Dublin. Joe McKelvey here in the Republican plot in Milltown Cemetery. Dick Barrett in his townland of Ahal Churchyard, County Cork. And Liam Mallows in Castletown Churchyard, County Wexford. All four men were Irish Socialist Republicans and were active in all facets of struggle. They had dedicated themselves to the creation of a republic with a clearly set out political agenda based upon national self-determination, social and economic justice and democracy, of cherishing all the children of the nation equally and of claiming the wealth of Ireland for the people of Ireland. Following the 1916 raising, the subsequent struggle for independence during the Tom War saw a greater influence being wielded by those who were politically conservative. Nevertheless, through the use of guerrilla tactics, electoral interventions, civil disobedience and the establishment of alternative political structures, Republicans had firstly wrested control of the country from the British state. Britain only retained power through armed force, terror and repressive laws. At the same time, other struggles began as workers and small farmers took control of factories and they broke up large ranches. Workplace occupations and land seizures began taking place. In the eyes of the middle class and conservative nationalist elements involved in the independent struggle, there was a danger that the struggle could become one of the exploited classes against their, their domestic oppressors as well. When Britain commenced the treaty negotiations, it knew these events had unsettled middle class Irish nationalists. Britain recognised that the best way of securing its interest in Ireland would be by those same conservative middle class Irish nationalists realising that Britain would defend their interests too. No longer was the objective to be securing the greatest measure of political, social and economic freedom for the mass of the population. Instead, these objectives were ditched in favour of a treaty that would see the creation of two partitionist states within the British Empire, when control of the means of production and wealth generation would still remain in the hands of a small but very wealthy minority. The men we honour here today recognised that fact and opposed the treaty. As Liam Mello stated, it would be folly to destroy English tyranny in order to erect a domestic tyranny that would need another revolution to free the people. The two states in this island, which were created through their treaty and partition, were and still remain hostile to the interests of Irish workers and have acted against the struggles of Irish workers time and time again. That was not the kind of future which Mellows, McKelvey and their comrades had envisaged. They knew only too well that partition would lead to the carnival of reaction envisaged by Connolly. And that carnival of reaction has been in full flow in recent years. The Ireland of today remains controlled by imperialism, albeit in a new and more subtle form. The objectives to which Mellows, McKelvey, Barrett and O'Connor and many others pledged their allegiance, the objectives for which they gave their lives are the same objectives which were clearly and unmistakably demanded through the 1916 proclamation and the democratic programme of 1919. These objectives have not been achieved. Settling for anything less than the complete achievement of those Republican objectives was not an option for those who we remember and honour today. They sought to establish a free, sovereign and independent Irish Republic, a workers' republic as Mellows called it. So as we remember Joe, Liam, Dick and Rory, let their example encourage us all to continue onwards to achieve their vision of a free and truly independent socialist Irish Republic.